As many of you know, TLN is broadcasting the European qualifiers for the 2022 World Cup. So today we're talking to John Doyle from the Globe and Mail, who is no stranger to going to pretty much any soccer tournament you can think of worldwide. John, thank you so much for joining us again. Welcome back to TLN. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Camilla. Nice to talk to you again. Always a pleasure to talk to you, and it's always a pleasure to get your input on these massive soccer tournaments because you've been there, you've lived it. And, and I want to talk to you about, I mean, first we'll get into Italy because they did fail to qualify at the last World Cup, and I think that was such a huge heartbreak and such a huge shock. What do you think these qualifiers mean to the Italian team and their reputation? It means a, a, a very great deal. Uh, the absence of Italy from the last World Cup was a complete shock. I'm sure that in cities around the world where there is avid interest in the World Cup, people missed Italy's presence because they expect Italy to be there. A lot of casual soccer fans would be still be knowledgeable about Italy and they would expect Italy to be there and probably into the last four in the tournament. So yes, a, a big shock, but if you follow uh, the Azzurri since then, I would say it looks like they're on the comeback trail under uh, Mancini. And these international stages provide such a huge opportunity for lesser known players to make a name for themselves and to maybe surprise people, surprise agents, surprise managers. So looking at you know, the current possible roster, who do you think has the biggest chance of, of making an impact and shocking everybody? Frankly, I don't think there is one. Uh, I don't think there is a sort of young, unknown Italian talent who's going to be put in the shop window. Uh, Mancini has picked pretty mature players. They have an excellent goalkeeper now. It's extremely hard to fit the shoes of uh, Buffon. I think in fairness to the teams that Italy is going to be facing in qualifying, the shop window is really for players on those teams. I mean, if Northern Ireland gets a good result against Italy, either home and away, that's going to put a young player who plays for Northern Ireland on everybody's radar. Now, John, let's talk about these upcoming matches. As Italy faces Northern Ireland, do you think this is going to be a challenging team for Italy to face? Yes, it is. Um, Italian fans might not rate Northern Ireland as much of a challenge, but they are hard to beat. Northern Ireland isn't even a country. It's a region in the United Kingdom. It's a small part of the island of Ireland, population of about... 1.5 million people, that's a shallow pool of talent to draw from. But in Ireland's history, it has qualified for the World Cup, I think, three times. It got to a playoff and only lost qualifying for that tournament through an extra time goal by Slovakia. For a tiny country or a region with a football association, that's an extraordinary record. Talking about Serie A now, if you've been following the season, if you've been watching the games, what is your opinion on the way that this season has kind of rolled out? Because for the first time in over 10 years, Serie A is finally back to being a competitive and an exciting league where the Scudetto winner isn't predicted at the beginning. So I just want to get your take on what you've thought of the season this year. It's been an exciting season to watch. I mean, there there has been plenty of drama by history and tradition. From my youth, I've drawn to teams like Napoli, you know, who were only briefly at the very top. Roma is a team that interests me from the very first time I went to Italy. Cristiano Ronaldo is, is a phenomenon, and he's just passed Pele's record. What he's able to do at that top level uh, is one of those reminders that Serie A is one of the great leagues of the world. Now that you mentioned Ronaldo, I want to get your take on this Ronaldo project that we all became familiar with in 2018. I mean, Juventus bought Ronaldo for an astronomical price with the hopes of bringing back the Champions League. And although they have won Scudetti and although he has done huge things for the league, in your mind, do you think that this Ronaldo project was a success or a failure? I think it was a success. Even if you consider just one aspect of this, the attention paid to the team because of this one player is phenomenal. You have to be pragmatic about club teams in Italy 
and the attention, the money that comes in from sponsorship, from vast audiences around the world, that's important. So that experiment was a success. And will he stay or will he go? What's your take on that? My suspicion is he'll stay. He hasn't moved around a lot in his career. As a youth, he was playing uh, for, for Porto. He went to Manchester United. He went to Real Madrid. He's not the kind of guy who has a, a glamorous figure. He likes stability in his life. <laughs> and Syria offers stability.